We are setting up our morning for tea in the garden. Right there. We're going to sit right there. Got the tea tray on the table. Electricity run out there with the kettle. <laughs> this is going to be great. Shade. So I got my laptop to take notes. My camera to capture the birds. Tea tray. Kettle and tea books. Okay, we have for today's tea tasting this uh, Wo Shan Shong Ya, and I know I butchered the name, but I am trying. And it's from Elmwood Inn Fine Teas in Danville, Kentucky. Um, it's grown in this An Anway, I don't know how to say it, China. And uh, we'll look at that more later in the tasting notes. You steep it for 175 to 185 degrees for two minutes, but I don't uh, do the two minutes. I do 20 seconds to start. Um, oh, I get a peek at the tea. Okay, we're going to get ready to do our smelling. Oh, I can't wait to open the bag. <laughs> okay. This is amazing. I love when tea looks like this. Now, I went ahead and went with four ounces. I try to do all teas at uh, five ounces, but um, this package is a 12 ounce tea, and if I divide it by four, that'll give me three sessions. Look at that. Oh, there's that fuzz. You've seen me show that on other videos. That fuzz usually means a very young bud. Oh, this is good tea. <laughs> oh, look at that big full leaf set in there. And look at the colors. Okay. Birds singing. I hear two or three different kinds. And a beautiful tea with texture. Perfect weather outside. Quiet time. My kind of morning. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Now it's 83 degrees Celsius and 180 is what we're doing our water on for about 20 seconds. Then if I need to do more the next steep, I will. <laughs> more smelling. I love the first wet brew when I get to smell it. There's after the first brew. And here, Ooh, is your yellow. Oh, we can't put it up against the grass. It's a very pale. Oh, can't do it up against the grass. There's a good picture of it. Here goes the second steep. We got one girlfriend sitting on her tuff. <laughs> That's what we call it when she always sits on the piles of pillows in her happy place. And this girl's always right next to you. Anyway, I put the leaves like I always do. <laughs> no, not, I sometimes forget. But here they are after the second steep so you can see how beautiful they look.
I have a feeling after the next steep they might open up just a little bit more, but you can see they're nice full leaves. love watching that. Opened up even more. excited to try uh, this yellow tea being as it's only the second yellow tea I've drank and um, so here are my tasting notes uh, we I read that it's from Mount uh, Shuo I think is how that's uh, pronounced based on this um, here's some pronunciation I found online. I think it says Shuo Shan Shuanya. Shuo Shan Shuanya. I can't guarantee that. And um, so I also found uh, that it's named after the, the Shuo Shan County in Huang and Shuang State. So uh, that totally makes sense. I love when uh, names of the tea just represent where they are grown. And um, then I've also uh, read that, uh, what is this? Shuanya means yellow bud. Uh, of course, Shuan uh, Cha means yellow tea because we know cha means tea, but I was like, what's ya mean? And so I looked it up, um, just Googled it, and it says ya is comparable to Eng the English ah or oh, <laughs> and it also has a similar function um, to, I don't know what those Chinese words are, but it is used in place of ah when the words before it end in a vowel. Okay, so for example, um, this word here is very good, y'all. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> so I don't know um, if that's accurate or not, but I can imagine that that's a wonderful thing that we are talking about the uh, county and state and y'all, great tea. <laughs> So this is from uh, Elmwood Inn Fine Teas, and uh, the date of my tasting notes, July 3, 2021. Um, it's a yellow tea, and I looked up uh, the website, says it, this is from Da Hong Ping Tea Garden. Now, I always love when I get exactly where the tea is from. Now on Google, um, it didn't come up with uh, the tea garden, but it did come up with the, the uh, location. And you see where it is here. Um, you see this Anwe, Anwe right here in the writing. Um, and so that is the prefecture, maybe? <laughs> Am I getting that right? and uh, how close that is. And if we zoom in a little more, you can kind of see it here. And zoomed in even a little more, this uh, Hoshan County is in red right here. So that's where this tea is grown. Um, so processing, um, We've got steamed, I put my steamed uh, graphic out there and you'll read why. Um, it's plucked in early April. So from Wikipedia, um, this uh, yellow tea, and um, this is for yellow tea, not this specific yellow tea. Um, it's a rare and expensive variety. 
process of making yellow tea is similar to that of green, but with an added step for encasing and steaming the tea. So that's why I put steamed because yellow tea um, is encased in something and steamed, um, which allows a uh, oxidation at a slow rate as opposed to, I guess, a regular rate of green tea. Um, this is done to remove the characteristic grassy smell of green tea. So um, here are the varieties it gives for yellow tea. And uh, so I want to actually eventually go back and find some more of these to try. But you see this one right here is Hoshan. Uh, I'm already mispronouncing it. <laughs> Shuangya. Um, from Mount Ho in this province in China, but uh, I find it interesting the yellow, ye other yellow teas out there. Now there is, um, those are just in China. It, Wikipedia also listed a Korean, Korean one called this, Huang Cha. Um, and I've had one from Mississippi, USA. That's the one other that I have had. And uh, so that's a lot of fun. Now from this Sencha Tea Bar uh, blog, um, <clears throat> we read more about this uh, yellow tea and then specifically this yellow tea. It said the same thing, one extra time consuming step. Um, that's why one reason why um, this tea is becoming rare is that it takes longer to process, but um, it, it's plucked in early spring and um, using direct sunlight or pan firing. Uh, then it is wrapped in a wet paper or cloth. That's the encasing that Wikipedia talked about, so we have a better visual about what it's wrapped in. Um, sometimes paper, sometimes cloth to induce a mild oxidation processing through steaming. So it's wrapped and then steamed. I'm intrigued. I'd like to see that going on. There are quite a few YouTube videos. You could search this tea. I was watching a bunch of them. Um, so this ancient yellow specifically now on the same website it listed a bunch of different yellows but specifically for this type of tea it was cultivated in this Anhui province it's near extinction for this type of yellow tea wow <laughs> that's why it's so expensive but i did find it was reasonably um, inexpensive reasonably priced would be a good word and um, where uh, I bought it here. So uh, you can, um, can uh, get this tea yet. And from seven cups, I, one of the things I noticed different that they said was that it's in the same category as white tea because it's lightly oxidized. And I was like, aha, that makes sense to me. Um, why do all these other websites keep calling it closer to green? because the way it's processed is closer to white. But then you'll see my notes as we go further. Um, it is more like green tea, this particular one, because of the way it tastes. Uh, but the processing makes me think of white. Um, notes, so from the Elmwood Inn website, it says the buds of this rare, so again we're getting that it's rare, which makes it feel all the more special. Um, and uh, it says it gives a tasting of toasted nuts and sweet corn. You know, I'm going to have to go back um, and uh, when I have my next brew, Pay attention, see if I get sweet corn. But I did get the nuts. I did get the nuts. Um, it's noted as one of 14 most famous teas of the Tang Dynasty. Um, and uh, it's plucked in early April, so I liked that uh, I had that information. And except 
that the leaves are covered prior to complete drying. So in this case, it says um, rather than encasing or wrapping in paper or cloth, it talks about a piling process where they are covered prior to piling. So um, makes me wonder if this is a little bit different process than elsewhere on the web for this particular one. So rather than taking uh, bunches and you know cut and uh, wrapping it, which makes you think about it going all the way around, um, they put these in big piles and then they just cover them maybe with a cloth. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure, but uh, that's uh, what the website, which would be the most accurate for this tea, this specific tea, uh, would do. We are 175 to 185 degrees for two minutes, and here's what we got. <clears throat> I got nutty and uh, vegetal. I was like, mm, I always love smelling tea. Ah, you should hear me when I smell. I should record it. I'm going to go something like, hmm, and I'm not sure quite how to like write that down, so I put yum. <laughs> it smells wonderful, and at first I got nutty. That's what I got first, and then I tried to decide what nut, and I thought maybe almond, and then I thought, no, maybe walnut, which are two very different nuts. <laughs> I'm going to lead more to, to the almond, um, but then hubby said grass, and I decided that it was vegetal too, but more like a green veggie, such as asparagus or maybe spinach, um, but he just said, nope, I smell grass, I smell grass, and lo and behold, he was right, because when I smelt the wet leaves, it lost all nutty and veggie smell, and it was clearly just a wet, grassy aroma, so, um, but it did change for me, and I have a better nose than hubby, but he is developing his nose. It's getting better and uh, better. So the color on my spectrum here, I've got it as pale down here. And I wish it was more yellow. We see more yellow would, would be here a little bit more um, saturated, but nope, it was pale. Um, body, this, the middle category, two of medium and I always uh, ask hubby what he thinks before I tell him what I think, because uh, if I tell him what I think first, he'll just repeat the same thing I got. So uh, he said, it's much fuller than I thought it would be. And I was like, that's my exact same thought. And I just love it when we think the same. But for such a pale color, you wouldn't expect it to have more body. Um, the astringency was, it was like zero astringency. So sometimes my notes get separated based on when I'm typing because I type things in order. So there's more on astringency, a bit lower. The uh, taste was a very subtle flavor, uh, but there was some nut and some grass. And I have to agree that this is like green tea without the astringency. Definitely. So whatever they do in processing to take out that astringency that I don't like in things like uh, maybe Sencha, um, uh, there's, there's actually very few green teas I prefer uh, over uh, some like Giacoro, which is supposed to be the most expensive uh, one. I didn't like it because of the astringency. But th whatever they do for this one, it does take that out, and um, I did uh, greatly uh, appreciate that. Um, the second steep was the same. As I said here, reminds me of Sencha without the astringency. <clears throat> the finish was the same grassy, nutty taste, um, also lingering in the finish. I gave it four hearts rather than five. It's not like a fan favorite. Um, it would make a great summer tea, though. Great, because in the summer we want, you know, light uh, teas because it's hot out. 
um, as opposed to uh, warm, cozy kind of teas in the winter. Um, so grass is not my favorite flavor profile, so that also gave it four hearts instead of five. Uh, but I really did like it, so don't let that throw you off. I really did like it. And I think for the most part, uh, this is a forgiving tea. Um, uh, as the, this is my terminology, uh, and we tend to start looking for it now. Uh, forgiving tea is if you inadvertently brew it too long, does it still taste okay? Uh, unforgiving, if you inadvertently brew it too long, oh man, it's ruined. But for the most part, it's a forgiving tea. Because although I got a little bit of astringency when steeping it longer, it never really left that smooth level. But then we really tested it to the extreme. Like we sat and chatted for a while and went, oh no, I forgot to dump my tea. And Hubby didn't like it any longer and said it was bitter. But I thought it was okay. I didn't think it got ruined at all. I might have bumped it up to that bright light category of astringency, which I actually like that category. So, um, four hearts, uh, five hearts uh, means that I would want to keep it on hand all the time and, and I don't love it that much. <laughs> uh, my photos aren't very good. Um, you would think outside that they would have taken better photos, but sometimes, you know, lighting is makes all the difference. It's actually a very, very beautiful tea. So I hope you enjoy my notes, and if you uh, have any thoughts on this tea, uh, please let me know. I want to hear from you.